you're watching an episode of Shiftcast. You can catch the full episode on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. We got off-season roundup. Obviously, there has been a lot changing. Even though the season's not technically over, we got World Championship in September. Um, but a lot has been happening. I mean, we've got the, I mean, the big one. Let's just go ahead and get right to it. Ahmad has decided to retire. And that is just, that's so sad. Yeah, dude. I mean, I think most people would consider him the quote-unquote godfather of Mina. Um, the most influential player in Mina, along with Okali. Um, him, Okali, and Senzo making up the um, making up the first ever sort of like notable Mina roster with Sandrock Gaming. I said just the two of them because I know they were quite popular in show matches with right. uh, and uh, Okali, obviously, who honestly might be retired too. We have no idea yeah. what's up with him. He might be playing yeah. the World Championship. He might not. We don't know. He might sip a close and just never hear from him again. But yeah, no, right. So, he might do a typical and never announce his retirement, but actually, you know. Yeah. Um, but in either way, you know, they're legends that, they, they, you know, major finalists, which, um, you know, not many people can say they've done. You know, the yep. majority of major finals seem to be made by either Seiko or Fatira. So um, it's tough to, to make it there. It's, it's incredibly hard. And Ahmad was able to show up to the Copper Box in, uh, three, two years ago and, you know, come a game away in that first series from being a major champion. Uh, it's also... He's also got one of the most iconic um, casting moments as well. Mm -hmm. When when Johnny just screams, "Oh my God!" <laughs> and then you know an underrated one was the seventh from heaven. CJ yeah, CJ's yeah, first true. ever let kind of notable call uh, in that great series against I think it was Gen G. Um, yeah, just um, a, a wonderful player. Seems like he's beloved by most most of the players he played with and and and, and a, the scene. Um, so also. You know, last ever Rocket League tweet was making fun of VK Salen. So, you know, finished right. with a bang, even <laughs> if the, the final major didn't do great. But, um, you know, I will well, be missed. He'll be a he's a he's a he's a kind of a he's kind of a staple of international Rocket League for the last three years. And it'll be it'll be weird seeing international lands without without Ahmad there uh, going forward. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he was. For a whole generation of Rocket League Esports fans, mm -hmm. he was one of the faces of an emerging region, which he helped put on the map. So, yeah, it's sad to see him go. I mean, uh, what what would have what could have been with right. that Rule One roster, with with their, everything that Mina was cooking up. But uh, I mean, there's still so many great players that. I don't think it will really cause much of a shockwave for the region, but uh, yeah, it's uh, unfortunate. Well, that's just the beginning of it. Um, we got Cloud9, and there's just a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of an odd situation. They do drop the full roster. Um, there's also been, you know, the prior rumor that Lion Blaze and Percy were looking to um, separate from Zanil, anyways. But Cloud9 drops the roster, but they put a note that they're looking to stay in Rocket League. So maybe some unsigned team at the moment, maybe in a, maybe over in Europe. I mean, what do you yeah. guys think about that? Well, I, I wrote up on this for Shift. You can actually go read the article about it on Shift RLE. Whoa. RLE .gg. Um, okay. Can you, and that? I, I, I kind of one put more time? Uh, Shift RLE .gg, the home for Rocket League news and intel. You can also find all the information about scheduling for the Shift Summer League, which will be on this oh. channel during its league play stage uh, and the play-in, I believe. So gotcha. um, Playoff. Well, play-in, yeah, play yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, the second part. Um, but uh, I, I kind of highlighted three teams. I think that Cloud9 may have identified as potential teams that maybe provided a better chance at, co at competing. Um, no disrespect to the C9 team. They were very good. They were definitely a major contending team in North America. But I think maybe with the team kind of breaking down and the teams that are available, you're kind of like, how oh, we can maybe go in a different direction. Um, the first team, the most obvious team, I think that people will be linking C9 to is um, Rettles, Magic Bear, and Cheese. Obviously, comes with a big fan base. Rettles is a, is a superstar in his own right. Uh, and they're, they were a major contending team all season. They made a major. They were... Had an off second split, but you know we're in position to make the world championship. I think the snowmen, right? Like mm. you look at the old 
C9 on. team, the, the legendary C9 team, they picked up a team of young players who are really starting to gain a lot of traction in the scene, and they might want to run back to that. And then uh, the last one is a team that was signed up for uh, SSL to play together, uh, which is the Peeps, which are back for the 19th time. Uh, Mist, AJ, and Gyro have decided to Ooh. team together. This is not a team that's decided. They haven't tweeted that this is their team they're going to be playing right, with. Right. They're just kind of a pick and roster, but they, you know, if they do well, they'll probably stick knows? together, uh, at least for a while. So that could be a team that also, you know, I think if C9 wants to go to the OG route, sign a bunch of veterans, bank on their experience being what differentiates them and make majors, um, I think that that's also a team that could be uh, picked up by them. So yeah, tons of options. Um, and it'll be exciting to see them stay in the game. It's cool that they want to still be in the game, especially yeah. with how much org insecurity there is now. It's a bit of a weird one because they've not been with the roster for that long, right? It's just been a couple of months. April, I believe, is when they picked up the squad. Yeah. Um, and it is very common this year to see organizations drop the entire roster and probably pick the same or a different roster up uh, come 2025 or at least some date closer to next RLCS season. Because yeah. even though there are going to be some off-season tournaments to play, if you're not making it to well London in the first place or Dallas Worlds uh, later on in the year, you know there's not that much to play for. There was one thing that could change that for a lot of organizations, and that is the Esports World Cup because the organizations get a huge bag of money just for competing and placing relatively well in a, in a multitude of different esports, right? So if they can add Rocket League to that lineup, that would make them quite a, a, a good bit of money. And an, espo an esports organization like Cloud9 is one of the prime contenders to be in all, as many games as they can. So... Yeah. This pickup was a little bit of, like, are they doing it for RLCS or do they have other motives? Um, and now it seems like there's only two spots per region plus some wild cards for the Rocket League portion of that event. So they might realize that they're not making it in and that might be the reason that they're dropping it. It's not very clear yeah, why. Because G2 exactly. and Gen.G are also partnered orgs and you don't want to... You know, yeah, you're thinking we can't that means them, that guess. maybe it's not your turn to yeah. be there. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a weird one, but yeah. yeah, in a larger scheme of things, it's nothing weird to see an organization the size of Cloud9 drop their roster and come back in a couple months. Mm -hmm. Well, to, to Michael's note, it is nice that they've at least expressed interest in uh, yeah. the Rocket League space, so that's always a positive. We've got Although two... Cloud9 have done that for years without picking yeah. up a roster. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's it, yeah. Back to that, they, they huh? have. Back they... To, are they coming back? Yeah. April Fool's we, um, well, yearly tweets. Yeah. Uh, we've also got two SAM rosters being completely dropped with W7M and Crew. Um, and I think this is kind of, it's one of those things where, you know, when it hits kind of your your, your more popular, your mainstream or, or longstanding regions, it's just going to hit even harder in the emerging regions or the ones that don't get the same support. Like SAM doesn't have a big RLCS broadcast the same way that NA does. Um, and so a lot of times those orgs, well, like like Yin's outline, there's really no really no opportunity from now until 2025 unless you're at the World Championship to to be represented. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things I want to talk about this one is AJG specifically, who seems to have gone to Europe. I don't know if like there's been any talk about that, but he competed in a LAN with two Spanish players a couple weeks ago, and then seems to have signed up for um shift summer league with stizzy and dorito i think is the is the team but i could be wrong um, i'd have to look that up but that sounds yeah, about right I, I know i know he's playing with stizzy i can't remember what the third one is so um could be that you know hey they told him listen we're not going to keep you and he said you know i i'm trying to go play with you know spanish-speaking players up in um so in up in europe so that's pretty cool uh it'd be cool to see him move because it'll be the first time i've ever seen a player actually go to europe like yep. like cross region into Europe, which is you know we always we often see Europe as the sort of uh, the the Dante's Inferno of Rocket League. No one goes there because you have to compete with all those French players. So it'd be cool to see a, a cross region transfer to Europe. Uh, and I think AJG can do it because you know he was looking quite good back on Complexity with two with a Spanish player. So maybe uh, 
maybe he you know maybe he stays there and and, and we see a sam player make some make some problems up there mm. crr's back over there maybe they link up again yeah i mean if he's smart <laughs> but i i think so i think crr is will probably stay on complexity because they seem to have built their program a bit around him and they i believe they're trying to go back to na sorry if that's a leak but i believe they, they're going to try to go back there um so maybe he says ajg i'm sorry i kicked you why don't you come back to why don't you come back to north america i need i need someone to fill the gaps and miss uh miss open shots in overtime Okay. See, you just didn't even have to do that. <laughs> what the heck? That was but, so unnecessary. But uh yeah, so I mean they were great together. I think it'd be smart for the team up. I think it was a mistake for them to leave each other. So it would be cool to see them eat NARU um to, to to play together and, and finish what uh finish what they started. The real conspiracy theory is is of course that he moved to Europe just because he wasn't eligible to play in the shift summer league otherwise. Oh. Well, you know, for a, for a, for a tournament as as prestigious and you know, kind of the crown jewel of Rocket oh, yeah. League esports, you know, he his opportunity. Will do that. Yeah, that's cool though. It's cool that he's kept relationships with with, with players yeah. outside of the region enough to be able to go and do that. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, you have this whole South American community. You have a Spanish community, which is obviously uh, much smaller, but especially outside of Brazil the south american community isn't that large either so it's cool to kind of see them link up sometimes yeah totally well unfortunately we have uh some more bad news and it actually gets worse we've got an ssa org snakes den uh they are accused of ghosting the team dude just completely yeah. not paying dude. them dude, uh, dude, this is so dumb why would you ever expect why would you sign to an org called snakes den <laughs> <laughs> the name kind of gives it I away. Was, that's, I was I was I was signed to this team called uh Scam uh, we will scam you and we will <laughs> not pay you FC and then they didn't they didn't pay me. What the like I come on know. guys. I, why are we stay talking about the, face clan? Stay true to the brand. <laughs> They're snakes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the it's, I don't know. It's like I went to the bar that's I went to this bar last night called We Hit You in the Head with a Baseball Bat. You can I can't believe what happened, you know? But seriously, <laughs> that sucks. Uh bedroom orgs, I'm tired of them. We need some sort of regulate regulatory body for esports orgs because we do. it's getting and, too and, ridiculous. And what I was talking about earlier too, like the you know, what hits the your your larger regions, you know, that might hit like the tier two of NA or EU, but that's gonna hit hard in an SSA in an APAC, those kinds of things. Uh, well, it's just, it's unfortunate because those players are just trying to find a home. They're trying to find some support. They're trying to, you know, find a, a way to earn off of what they've worked so hard to achieve and, and, you know, to be done wrong like this is, I can imagine, extremely frustrating. Yeah. Brutal. Well, yeah. We're hoping for the uh, best for that squad and hopefully they can find a, an org. Yeah, you guys can contact me. I'm actually starting my own org. What's um, it called? What's it called? It's called uh, financial <laughs> fraud, uh, white collar crime. Uh, FF. Esports. <laughs> yeah. FF, FF esports. Financial fraud. Yeah. You know, actually, got... it's it, it's been a while since uh, Shift had to write an article. This time it was Finn. Last time it was me writing about G one. Yeah. yeah. Where it's just you know there's almost nothing positive to get out of it. It's just misery. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone wants to be my enemy. Yeah, you just feel for him. And, so just, um, you know, I'm sure when Snake Stand started, they did have good intentions. <laughs> Sorry, his name's so stupid. But, um, but uh, you know, we talk about other orgs like G1, where, I mean, Kenny Vaccaro, I, I genuinely believe he he wanted to create a really good org, and then he got himself in, in a hole and couldn't get out of it. Um, but, you know, you got to own up to it. You got you to gotta just, you, gotta, you know, you got to do enough research and planning beforehand to realize, do I actually have enough money or am I like, I'll figure it out as I go. Um, and that's why I say we need some sort of regulatory body. You should have to apply to be an esports organization because it ruins the, the professional sort of aspect, the industry of esports mm -hmm. when you have teams coming in that aren't paying players because it, it damages yeah. the ecosystem. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it takes away all the faith that people yeah. have in because there's there's a lot of it is built on trust, especially uh, with the takeover of of uh, Shift and everything we see behind the scenes. A lot of it takes a long time to figure out because you know there's money involved, there's legal issues. It takes a long time to get things sorted. So all the all the while you have to have trust that things are going to be working itself out. 
And if they don't, yeah, you need to own up. And owning up, G1, by the way, is not publishing a 20-minute video straight to Twitter and then not doing anything afterwards. That's not owning up. Yeah, that is that was a tough watch. Sure. Well, hopefully we don't have any more of those stories throughout this offseason. Uh, but we do have another roster release. Actually just went live today. Um, M80 had a, a very unique venture for the Rocket League eSports space, something that really hasn't been done before. And unfortunately, while I, I still think that was a great team, um, comprised of, of very talented players. They did not yield the results that they were after. And after the season, they have all separated and gone their own ways. I think Jorias and Nass are both uh, back home. And obviously, Michael just mentioned that AJ is, um, you know, he's looking around and trying to find a new roster for next season as well. So, yeah, that is it's a bizarre, bizarre result, you know, for a, a well-meaning project. I think that's one of the most, in, yeah. in, in my opinion, like if you just look at the talent, that's one of the, the biggest like, why did it not work? What if? It's not really a what if kind of thing because we saw it happen, but it's just, it's just weird. Like, it just, uh, I just, it's it was just so weird. confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can, like, a, a Rocket League roster can go wrong. And I think, you know, MAD was like, oh man, what if they don't mesh personally? We have them living together. What if they don't like right. each other? You know, what if, what if, uh, you know, one of the players gets homesick? You know, mm -hmm. you know, NAS is traveling back and forth. What if that, I don't think anyone could have predicted what if we keep losing in the quarterfinals after after just farming Swiss. It's just a bizarre way for a team to go wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we'll ever see it again. It's one of those things where in five years, someone's going to make a YouTube video called like the weirdest RLCS roster of all time. And it's just going to be about M80 and their inability to beat anybody in a top eight match. I mean, they lost, no offense to TSM. They're a good team. They lost a TSM who didn't yeah. make another top eight. They lost this cloud nine like Dignitas, who didn't even make a, like they didn't make a, didn't win another top eight series the rest of the season. It was just a bizarre, bizarre season. So all the best to the players because I think they're all quite good. Mm -hmm. It's just that they had some sort of like like luck debuff for this whole. You, season. you want to talk about a boogeyman? Yeah. It's a quarterfinal match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah was, well, in terms of there. the in terms of the uh, MAT, the the organization releasing their roster that we all saw that coming the, the european players had been home for a while already yeah. uh, back uh, back in europe it, it was about to happen and this is another case of an organization that is really actually building up the trust in the ecosystem because mat have been as far as i can tell really good uh when it comes to to building a rocket league roster mm -hmm. i mean yeah. really giving it their all and yeah yeah not getting the results obviously but really trying and uh i will not be surprised to see them back in a couple months to half year maybe and uh see them compete uh, they're again my the favorite to, to sign Reddle's team i think oh, I think if i had to put a hundred dollars on it i know nothing mm. i really don't but if i had to put a hundred dollars on it i think they're going to go the complete opposite way which is let me build let, let's sign the team that we is like like we know they were they, like everything from a system perspective is, is, is on good and we just have yeah. to help them play well from one extreme to the other and like... uh yeah i mean m80 is a is a call is, they come from call of duty or their sorry their brass comes from call of duty because i believe their brass comes from phase or x set um and right, so yeah, from x sets yeah, yeah so i think that and i know rattles is is pretty plugged in around with optic and and some of the other cod players so I would not be surprised if they if they end up with that roster for sure, or at least it's an interesting. I for I think MH is just a really interesting organization altogether because they're pretty new. Mm -hmm. Of course, the the ownership has some experience with Exet, but they're not a small organization because they're in multiple bigger esports, but also not one of the top dogs. You know, you know, is going to stick around anyway. So they just kind of have to prove themselves all the time, and I think. I, I have no clue how it uh, how it turns out for them, but maybe even their performance and their financial situation with like their Valorant roster might, you know, steer them in a different direction when it comes to picking up a new Rocket League roster, because mm -hmm. they're a pretty small organization as far as I can tell. So they have to make choices. Yeah, they've yeah. yet to find their flagship team, uh, I think, and I think they yeah. were really hoping that this Rocket League team was going to be their flagship team. Uh, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. tough. So, I mean, yeah. look at KC. I believe KC's best performing team is it was their Rocket League team before the split, and it was uh, 
it was it was played. um i think you're right in a bigger esports at least well mm, their um french league league of legends team like the lfl yeah. is really good like top yeah. tier and but then they don't their do well LEC, the lec team right? no it's not not great um one of their players is for um team fight tactics which of course is a much much smaller esport like barely exists but um you know it's still there uh i think what the player is like a friend of kameto as well and he's mm -hmm. one of the best in the world he's just winning everything right. so if so, you're yeah. purely looking at the percentages then maybe it's tft but rocket league of course absolutely it felt like their flagship team especially the way that that the viewers were coming in and stuff like yeah felt like the community yeah. was most hyped up of, i mean i'm yeah. sure they were most hyped up for league because kameto comes from league but the rocket yeah. league stuff and i think m80 was hoping for a similar sort of performance from the uh from the from from the rocket league team so listen i hope they stay in i really do think they're going to sign another good roster i think they're going to take it a different direction in terms of how they build it but uh i like having m80 i like having orgs that know what they're doing in rocket league it's very nice um and i think we've been blessed with a lot of really smart orgs at least lately with g2 gen g carmine vitality uh bds mates. Know, falcons mates like they all know what they're doing and it's really nice to have all the top teams be teams oh. space station complexity teams that know yeah. like they're real actual people that know what how to do esports which is is, is always nice uh like we got Den. one we got one final thing this uh, uh unfolded Ooh. today we have european players crispy and simas who have announced their journey across the pond they are going to be competing in crl uh in north america and have announced that they are looking for a team in north america more european invasion a couple players went home joriez went home nas went home so we had to fill their shoes and we got crispy and cmos yeah i mean they're looking for team for narls yes yep uh, as far as i know but they're there for the collegiate mm -hmm. programs which, which i, I, I want to say i think it's so cool that players are yeah. getting to get an, an a, education. You know, secondary education based on their their rocket league skills i think yeah, that's, that's, that's what it's yeah. all about man Mm -hmm. I mean, it, up in the future. we've talked about this before it just does not exist in europe it right. does not happen like the school system is completely not built like that if you mm -hmm. have an esports organization within your university i mean it's basically the same as running a league with friends like yeah th there's no budget or anything for that that you're definitely not getting a scholarship for it not that you would really need one because tuition is like one or two k per year but um it's just it doesn't exist to have that kind of facility and to have that facilitated in na is awesome uh i dread for simas to have his name pronounced simas all the time he's gonna <laughs> hate that i already know we've had him on, we had well, him that on, southern um, draw is gonna hit <laughs> yeah, for sure i mean he's um uh what's the, what nationality again um this is uh, like Irish, Lithuanian. Lithuanian or something? Lithuanian, yeah. that's it. Yeah. But yes, he lives or had lived in Ireland. It has a very Irish accent. Yeah. Unmistakable. Incre incredible to listen to him. But he's going to have a, quite a different experience in, in the like that, Well, that's another part of it, too. You can travel a little bit and spend some time in a new country. And, uh, Absolutely. So where really is really Concord cool College? I want to look. I think, they're I think West Virginia. Concord College. Yeah, I heard West Virginia. Yeah. Man, listen, no offense to them, because I'm sure that's where they got it. If I'm going from Europe Europe to play college, I want USC, UCLA. I okay, want, buddy. Okay. I want, you, I want Pepperdine. Those, okay. Those I want schools, Oregon. Those schools want... are not throwing out full rides for esports yet. 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 I agree. So, yet. Question for you guys. Here's my question. Yeah. If this becomes a thing where you see a lot of players getting full rides, especially if they're willing to bring them in from Europe. Who's going to be the first top player, like really top player to say, you know what, I I feel like I can balance RLCS and uh, co a college education and I'd like it for it to be for free. I'm going to go to college while I'm playing like real top player. Like I'm talking like major level. Do you think well, there's from anybody? NA or from another NA or EU? NA or EU. It's got to happen it, soon. I don't think it will because professional Rocket League, if, if they're a top player, professional Rocket League, like your earning opportunity far outweighs you could just you could do college after that's true i think like when, for when me, you're when you're 23 and you're on your decline you know you're no longer at a top four point you're not making 10k a month 
you know, winning 5,000 per tournament, then yeah. you can on your cool down, uh, you know, take the college route. Do you it think just, that to me, the, will... the, the formula doesn't make sense to like pr spread yourself so thin, right. you know, so, you, you, you've got this awesome opportunity with professional play. So, I mean, I, I just see players fully pursuing that while they can. So my, so here's a follow-up question, I guess then, cause I, I kind of agree with you, but what if, you know, a player, and I don't want to use him because I think he's washed, but I, I think he's around the age. <laughs> Easy. I don't think he's, I genuinely don't think he's washed. But I think of a player like like Arsenal didn't have a great year last year. Still hasn't been in the tank. Showed a little bit. But let's say he says, you know what? Maybe I got one two years left as a major contending player. Let me go to let me go let me see if I can get this full ride because it's still a full ride is still a full ride no matter yeah. what you how yeah, much yeah. money you're making. Yeah, I can see. Do you that. think we'll see? But do you think there's a chance that once one player does that? It'll be kind of like reverse pro sports where this, the college circuit is like the seniors tour where like we actually have like people watching because you got like a bunch of players yes. that were like fan favorite pros back in the day. Yes. You got like, you got like, yeah, like our, like in two years, you got like Arsenal Rettles like reunited on, on, you know, at the University of Arizona. And on the other hand, you got, you got like Garrett G has decided to go to college finally. And like people are watching because they want to see their old favorite players. Do you think hey, that's very players? funny? That's the perfect formula. That's the perfect yeah. trajectory. That's all what I've always thought. Because yeah. it's it's so it's so backwards in the process. Like with mm -hmm. traditional sports, as a kid, your body's growing and you're you know fine tuning your your motor skills, and then you hit adulthood, and then you are you know capable. Not everybody, but but professionals are capable of of competing at. But esports is so backwards where it's like a lot of times they are their best years are from 13 to 19. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I, I think esports, let's League, be honest. Yeah. Well, I think in other esports, it's like 18 till 25, maybe. And, and, and a lot of that is dependent on the style of game, when it was released, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think it's fair to say like 25 to 30 ish is definitely always going to be on the upper side of professional play for gaming. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that there won't be unique cases. I'm not saying there won't be people older than that. We'll have our LeBron James at 35 competing. Yeah, in he's, our, he's playing for OG. We're going to have it. Right now, okay. Actually. But I think it's the perfect setup where you can play in your, your best years for gaming when you have the least amount of responsibilities. You know, a lot of these kids don't even have, you know, have bills yet. You know, they never even heard of that. And so their, their, their mind is free to focus on this thing. And then you have college, which is perfect because, you know, you've done this career. You now get to go on and, and use the back half of that career to give yourself that platform for what's next. So yeah. I think it actually makes perfect sense. This is what I'm hoping. Okay. Three, like two, three years from now, it would like, I don't, it's not going to happen, but I would love this CRL worlds. Okay. Dream hack Dallas. Like it usually is. We get, we get NRG, Squishy, Justin, Garchi against Vitality, but they're K dot Alpha. Sorry, K dot Fairy Peak and Scrub. Turbo <laughs> is gone at this point, but they're playing for like universities. And like I promise you, it'll get watched more than the World's Final. It, that that would be those because, old men will be yeah. literally. It's gonna be 500k <laughs> concurrent. I'm not joking. Minimum. <laughs> Like uh, it would be more like we're not watching we're not watching mode in the finals we're watching no. Garrett and K Dot battle one last time. I mean, if we were serious esports, this is literally a show match for World Championship next year. Or yeah, something. but we're not a serious esports, so we don't have to unfortunate like, torture yeah. ourselves with this. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I just saw that the um, Crispy and Samus are going to a town called Athens. Oh, Georgia. So, Athens, Georgia. No, West Virginia. Oh, okay. I, so I, I hope they have a great time at the Acropolis where the Parthenon is. <laughs> it's like the same thing, dude. West Virginia and Greece are very similar. A lot of a lot of water, you know. Definitely not a flyover state. Well, to 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 bring us back full circle, Crispy and Simos competing on the same team, by the way, Concord, like they mentioned. Those are two players that both had um, anywhere from ninth to eleventh to obviously fifteenth, sixteenth, and and I think Crispy's team. And CMOS also may have missed one or two events, uh, but they were they were in and out. Um, I think they are talented prospects. It's definitely going to be. Uh, I think that that is in the East Conference, and the East for CRL is what's so so stout already. So um, it's going to be you know even more difficult to compete in the Eastern Conference. Um, 
CRL, I'm excited to hear more about it. it surely, if schools are picking it up, it's going to exist in the fall. It may just not be a two-semester thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's been kind of radio silence from Psionics, but uh, surely we can count on CRL for the All fall. Right, quickly, before we move on, Crispy CMS plus one, let's say top 12 level NA player. Yeah. Uh, where do, do we think that they're a top eight team in North America? Pushing for it, yeah, like in and out. Yeah, I would say they're on the same level as current, like as the old, like recently released Cloud Nine roster. Sure. And like, sure. um, what's another one I can think of? I don't know why I'm, but like TSM. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching this segment of the Shiftcast. Again, you can catch the full episode here on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Thank you for watching.